Gentlemen, this is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Carla Bruning. I heard about Carla from Steve Lasto, who is the guiding light for New York City Runs. Carla Bruning is a member of the New York Harriers. Um, she recently got married, um, so she's off the market, guys. Um, she, um, she's, a, she's a good runner. She's a, good, she's, a, she's a prominent writer. She's written about the Olympics, about running. She's done a lot of cool writing things. Um, and she's also, she, she also sings. She's in a band with other Harriers, um, and it's an 80s band. Please welcome Carla to the Gotta Run. Thank you. Carla, let's get started by introducing yourself to our audience. For example, where were you born? A little bit, some, a little bit about your family, something about your schooling. I was born and raised in the suburbs of Chicago, so I'm a Midwest girl at heart, but I've been on the East Coast since 1996, and I've been in New York City for, gosh, the better part of 12 years, so I think of myself as a New Yorker now. Um, I went to college in Massachusetts at Amherst College and then came to New York after that. Well, when you were growing up, were you naturally active, active as a child? I was. I, I've been an athlete since I can remember. I was a swimmer growing up a very competitive swimmer, um, competed at the state level as a child, and then in college I switched over to rowing, and I was uh, <laughs> that was very fun, 5 a.m. practices. I think it's uh, rowing trained me for the grueling life of a runner, and then I started running as an adult much later. Oh, rowing. That's very interesting. That probably built up your shoulders and arms. It did, yeah. It was a natural transition from being a swimmer to being a rower. Um, you, you know, it's one of those sports where your height and length you can help leverage. Um, so it made sense for me. I'm 5'8". And uh, yeah, I, wow, built up a lot of muscles okay. <laughs> during rowing muscles, which I've mostly lost now as a runner. <laughs> okay. But I think if I recall reading, you have some kind of knee issue. Was the rowing help to eliminate that? No, I wish. I had um, a slow growing bone tumor in my right leg. It was um, at the very top of my tibia, just below the knee joint. And um, it was initially misdiagnosed when I was 14 as Oshkodslaughter's disease, which is a, a tendon inflammation and very common to, um, you know, to younger athletes. So it made sense. I was a swimmer. They thought I had Oshkodslaughter's, um, and it was very painful. And so it was one of those things they just said I would outgrow it. By the time I was 19, I had this sort of, you know, visible lump on my leg, and I was just thought it was swelling, and I would take you know, four or six tabs of ibuprofen before every rowing practice to get through practice because wow. it was so painful. I did a lot of one-legged rowing <laughs> where I would sort of bear, you know, the whole weight of my stroke on my good leg. And finally, my coach was like, this is ridiculous. You're in pain constantly. Your knee's constantly swollen. I'm sending you to a trainer. You need to go have this looked at again. Well, it wasn't Oscar Slaughter's. It was a bone tumor. And I went through, gosh, six, seven doctors. All I was sent all over the country. No one knew what it was. It was this crazy mystery. Really? Yeah, it was. Um, my knee was at a national convention of radiologists. All of its scans. It had a, an academic paper written about it. Wow. That's yeah, very special. Just your knee. knee yeah. <laughs> just my, just my knee. And I finally had surgery, gosh, in 2003 uh, to remove a big hunk of the tumor. Um, and they wanted to make sure that it wasn't cancerous. It wasn't. And about a year after my, cover my recovery from the surgery is when I started running. My doctor wanted me to build back up the bone density in my leg and my, uh, you know, my right leg had the muscles, the muscles had atrophied from me babying it so yeah, much. Yeah. So he was like, get running. Running is the best thing you can do for it. And I was like, what? Running is so painful. Cause it used to be just something I wouldn't even think about okay. doing, um, because of the bone tumor. But, um, you know, after the surgery, it was a life changer for me. So you started running and you said you were fearful because it was painful. So how did that Obviously, something must have went well because you kept at it. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I was delighted to discover that you know now that the tumor was gone, running was no longer painful. The way the tumor was situated, it was you know rubbing up against my patellar tendon, and with that gone, my knee functioned properly again. And I actually found that running helped loosen up the joint and help me get a lot of the um, movement back in the joint that I had lost from before. And I. Sort of, to say I sort of got addicted to it is <laughs> putting it mildly. I completely got addicted. 
My first, my first memorable race was my first race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. But, um, you know, I had been running for almost two years and, you know, I'd heard about these races in New York through New York Roadrunners. And I was like, well, you know, if I started doing some races, it would give me some motivation to keep going. And it was one of the four milers in Central Park that I did. And I think I finished it at like an 11 minute pace. Well, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Um, for, you know, for my first race, I was happy with it, but I've, I've come a long way since oh, then. Okay. What was your next race that was memorable? I ran the New York City Marathon, my first marathon that fall. Um, I knew I probably wasn't ready to actually tackle a marathon, but I really wanted to give myself something to train for and look for. I'm a goal-oriented person. Oh. I did a four miler in April, and then I ran my first marathon in no in November. Did you the join the team November. at that point? I didn't join the team at that point. I was running on my own. Um, I did a bunch of the other New York Roadrunner races leading uh -huh. up to the marathon. To you know, so after the four miler, I did a five miler. I did a ten k. You know, I sort of tried to work my my way up to the marathon, um, and I was training by myself at that point. Interesting. You know, Were you shy in those days? I was. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I'm. I'm a decently shy person, believe it or not. Interesting. Yeah. So I well, looks like running has opened you up. It, it definitely has, and you know now I. You know now I am on a team. I'm. A, I run with the New York Harriers, and I've got tons of running friends, and it's. You know, it's a big part of my life now. Okay, but how did you discover the Harriers? I am in a band, an '80s cover band right. called the Fades, right. and. Um, I found my way into this band through someone who was a New York carrier, and as it turns out, um, almost every every single member of the band except for one person is a New York carrier. <laughs> it's one of those funny little things where, like, a running band, we running we band. play music and we run. Um, and so, you know, I, I had been interested in joining a running team, and you know, my all my bandmates were harriers, so it just made sense. Excellent. So you are a singer as well. Yes. Many hats. Did yes. you teach? I mean, did you study singing in college? I I did. It wasn't. Um, I wasn't a music major, but I I did study voice. I studied voice in high school and in college. I did a lot of um, musical theater and things like that. Okay. So your major was in. My major was actually in religion. Religion. Yeah. Interesting. A little bit different. <laughs> you wanted to become a nun? <laughs> no, I know. I always get to join a nun or a priest. No, I, I was more interested in, in uh, the sociology of religion and, you know, the role, obviously the big role it plays in society. All you have to do is look yes. at what's going on That's in right. Gaza right now That's to right. know that, you know. That's right. Oh, so you're so sort of you looking at it that way. So you always like like to sing as a child and so forth. Yeah, and yeah. Your parents I, encouraged you. Yeah, my mother was a singer, um, so I I grew up singing and um, you know grew up in choir and all those things. And when I got to college, I sang. Um, I was the lead singer of the Amherst College Jazz Band while I was in college and did musical theater. When I when I moved to New York, I actually moved to New York as initially as an actor and singer. You know, hoping to make it on Broadway. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like so well, many other people. You're still young. <laughs> might, might have an opportunity. Yeah, I don't know. I did that for a few years and then realized there are, there are other things I can be doing. Okay. <laughs> because I think you started a blog, a very well-known blog called Run, Caller, Run. That came about initially through um, the Washington Times Communities, which is um, sort of an online blogging arm connected to the Washington Times online. And I had a colleague who was the sports editor there. And he, you know, knew I was a runner, and I had done some running writing um, leading up to that about my marathon experiences, whatnot. And he approached me about writing a column about running for them, and so I thought, well, that would be great. I'd love to do that. Um, you know, I'm a, a journalist by trade, so that you know seemed to be a natural fit for me. And then I um, turned that into my own blog as well, Run Carla Run. So I have the column on the Washington Times communities online, and then also on my own website, RunCarlaRun.com. When you started the blog, you already had done a couple of marathons. Mm -hmm. So New York went well, obviously. Yes. And yes. what was the next big running event for you? So my next, after my first New York City Marathon, I, I decided to tackle New York again the next year. And I shaved almost an hour off of now, my time. Did you join a club at that point? I did, yes. In 2008 that I that I joined the Harriers. And um, I then and still do I, I try to go to one of the weekly we work they have three weekly workouts I try to go to you know usually the speed workout once a week when I can mm -hmm. especially when I'm you know in season and in training I think you, you're wearing another hat you you have your own show on uh, and that's not on tv if I catch it's on the internet it's, on the, it's a podcast yeah, yeah it's a web show yeah let's talk about that show 
It's called On the Run, and it's produced by New York Roadrunners. And um, the idea behind the show is to sort of, you know, give give runners a, a show of their own um, that dis- that talks about running and the life of the runner. And, um, you know, so we did a, we did sort of a pilot season this fall. We had five regular episodes, um, and we did a special episode at the um, Fifth Avenue Mile. Well, let's talk about the Fifth Avenue Mile mm-hmm. really, because I love that in fact everybody does. Yeah, I love the mile. So that one you went to location, right? You yeah. went there and then uh, and I think you probably interviewed Sid Howard and all the Yes, we did. Yeah. And the leading candidate for the mile was so so how does it feel to, to do that, you know? To approach it, these people. It's you know, it's it's really fun. It it was sort of it, working on the show has, uh, you know, it's great that I, I get access to, you know, professional runners and get to interview them. And, you know, some of the leading locals, people like Sid Howard. And, you know, I interviewed, you know, Leo Manzano, who just won a silver medal at the Olympics, you know, and a, and a bunch of other, you know, really amazing professional athletes. That's really exciting as a runner. Um, as a reporter, I've covered the Olympics before. I went to the 2010 um, Winter Olympics in Vancouver mm-hmm. for the Washington Times. So, you know, that was sort of my first big foray into, you know, standing there with a the microphone and, you know, interviewing Apollo Ono. <laughs> So doing it in the running world is is exciting because these are athletes that I personally follow. Whereas, okay. you know, at the Olympics, I don't necessarily follow curling. You right, know, even right. though I was interviewing curlers and you know writing stories about them, um, you know, I was that was very much a learning curve for me. Whereas with running, you know, it's exciting because these are these are people whose careers that I follow personally, in addition to professionally. Oh, excellent! Mm-hmm. A lot of it's produced in a studio. So the way it works is um, for the regular shows, um, we we produce um, you know all the intros and um, to the d- different segments that we have at the National Track and Field Hall of Fame in the Armory um, up in Washington Heights, and then we have prepackaged segments that you know the producers put together ahead of time. So this season, um, you know they went out to California and interviewed Meb Kaflesky, and they went to Oregon and talked to Kara Gotcher and Shalane Flanagan, and they went to South Dakota to you know um, do a, a piece on. Um, some runners from the Pine Ridge Re- Reservation and the, and the Lakota Nation there. Oh, so a lot of, you know, interesting stories from runners all around the oh, country, pros and oh, non-pros. Oh, I love Indian running, you know. They're so natural and beautiful in what they do it. And some of them wear the traditional hairpiece. And when you see the Mohawk, you know, when yeah. they're doing it, it's just wonderful. Well, and they were a group of runners who were coming to run the New York City Marathon um, for, for a charity. They were running for One Spirit, which is an organization that tries to support um, Native Americans and particularly the, the Lakota tribe. Mm-hmm. It would make me really proud to see our Lakota youth in the New York Marathon. A long time ago, I think it was 1964, a man named Billy Mills, he was from right here, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. He won the 10K in the Olympics. I kind of think this is some probably as exciting as that. It's gonna be exciting, a little scary, a little nervous, but it's gonna be fun. Lots of people, big things. <laughs> nervous. The only hope for our people is to bring back some of the old ways and the old, old respect and honor that we had our people and each other. You have to make the young people understand why they're running, what's behind it. Good luck uh, on this last month of preparations. Some of these guys have been preparing, you know, good six months now in the New York Marathon. I think it's really cool just like being able to be like a positive representation of the tribe. I've been waiting for something like this to happen and where the kids are making an impact. Whatever dream in life you have, can come true. I have people ask me, what are you running for? And I'm like, I'm running for you guys.
and they were raising money for a new youth center on the reservation. And, you know, a lot of them have kids and this was something they were really passionate about. And I got to interview them when they were here in New York. So when the race was canceled, um, they were sort of the people that, you know, my heart really broke for because they were so excited. But of course, they understood, yeah, yeah, you know, as, yeah. ev as everyone did. Yeah. You're not an employee of New York Road. No, Runners. I am not. Okay, no, so, I am not. So anything you say is your personal opinion. You're Absolutely. never presenting anybody other than <laughs> Just yourself. Just me, yeah. Well, what was your take on that whole situation with Roadrunners? You know, it's, it's, it's one of those situations, I think it was just unfortunate all around across the boards. I don't think anybody won. I think it was a lose-lose for everyone. Um, I completely understand why the race was canceled. Um, you know, in the end, personally, I think that, that the race might have been able to do more good than harm. Um, I think if the national telecast had, had been able to go on as, you know, sort of they were hoping it would as a, as a telethon for hurricane relief, you know, it would have had the potential to raise yeah. a lot of money for the long-term yeah, relief. Yeah, but yeah. I also completely understand that in the short term, you know, it was something that was you know, painful to a lot of people and also, you know, the resources could have been used elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of those six of one and half dozen of the yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. But I love the fact that a, a lot of the runners came together and did, like you said, they did their own thing. Yeah. And some of them, you know, went to Stein Island and carried packs of food and ran to the community that needed it. And some went to Central Park and ran, I think it was called the Anyway Marathon. Yeah, right, the Run Anyway Marathon. That that was, you know, all of that was actually made me really happy. The, the whole tone of the debate was what really got me down as a runner and as someone who cares about this community. And as a New Yorker who cares about New York, I, I, I was really saddened by how, how mean the tone of the entire debate on both sides became. And um, seeing on Sunday, on Marathon Sunday, all of the amazing things that runners went out and did anyway, you know, the people who volunteered and there were people, you know, not just on Sunday, there were people volunteering on Saturday and people who've, you know, gone out in the week since and the runners who went to Central Park and ran. And I was, I was there in Central Park um, to be part of a pit crew for a friend of mine who was supposed to be running his first marathon in New York City. Yeah, yeah. And it was important to him to keep doing it because he was running for charity and he'd raised $8,500 for a charity and it was a, a charity that's close to his heart. It was the Brain Tumor Foundation. His father died of a brain tumor. Oh, yeah. So he was running for his dad yeah. and he felt that, you know, he'd made a commitment to them and he'd made a commitment to all the donors who donated on his behalf. He said he was going to run a marathon. So he was like, I have to go run a marathon. So he was one of those people out there in Central Park. Yeah, and it was beautiful. I think they estimated over 20,000 ran in Central Park that day, different events. It was amazing. It was yeah. amazing. I think people were, were using the Hurricane Sandy as a platform because they were saying things like runners were just people that were able to afford to pay over $200 to run in the shorter shorts <laughs> <laughs> in a parade. And, you know, my gosh, you consider the parade, they consider <laughs> right. the runners as rich kids, and the mayor, of course, got his lumps for allowing it. One of the things that, I, that I've written about multiple times in my column and my blog is that, you know, a lot of, uh, there is this concept, this perception of, you know, amongst people that that don't run, that, you know, all these marathoners taking over the city and, you know, it's a huge inconvenience and, and all of that is true, but run, runners do a lot of good. And the sheer amount of money that runners raise for charity, I think has to be beyond almost any other you know, athletic group in the country. I mean, it, it, at this, I mean, it's hundreds of millions of dollars a year that runners raise for charity. It is, it is. I've had the coach, the former coach for team and training uh, Ramon Bermo here. And at that time, he said that team and training in the 20 years they were doing, I think they probably started the, the charity running mm -hmm. thing. They raised over $1 billion to charitable, uh, to charity runners. This is just an amazing amount of money. It's an, yeah, and, and every year it's hundreds of millions of dollars a year. That's and right. that's just one group that's, right. that's raised that's right. over exactly. a billion that's dollars. Team just and training, one group. group. The purple, the purple the, the team, team that purple, yeah. <laughs> and so that was the idea again, was to use running as a way to bring the community together, to raise those funds, to bring it in, to honor the charity runners, to mm -hmm. honor those, those people that had done the thing. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. It, uh, 
for whatever reason, and uh, they had to do the right thing, which was right, to cancel. Right, which was it. to cancel. Yeah. Well, and they'll figure out what to do about next year. You know, how <laughs> do you transition? This is, this is a unique time of time. It is. It is us. a unique time. Oh. Carla, we're almost out of time, but before we close it out, can you tell us what is your, your future challenge? I'm doing the Walt Disney World Marathon in January, and I'm really excited about it. I'm a huge Disney fan. I'm a big Disney nerd. Um, I actually uh, got engaged at Walt Disney World after the Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon. My husband is also a runner, and he proposed after that race. Really? Yeah. Oh, my so, God, was that captured on video? No. no private moment? <laughs> it was a private moment. We took some, we took some photos afterwards, and, I've, of, you know, private in a blogger's terms is, you know, right. a relative term. I've, of course, blogged about it, so it's not all that private. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how romantic. Yeah, so um, we're, we're going down there, and I'm really excited to do that race. It's the 20th anniversary, so they've, they've got a new special course and a bunch of, uh, you know, fun events surrounding okay. that. They have something called the Goofy, where you could do a half and a full. Are you doing? I'm I, not I, doing are you going goofy. goofy. I'm not going. I know, as they say, going Goofy. I'm not going Goofy. <laughs> I, I thought about it, and I just don't know if I have it in me. You were surprised. So. <laughs> I know it's true. You never know. I, I did. I, I loved it. I did the goofy. You did the goofy. Yeah, I did the uh, the half on Saturday. And then the full on and Sunday. The full on Sunday, and, and and it was hot, and we start very early, and. Good thing with the half by nine o'clock. Well, we, I think we start like six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, the, or seven o'clock. The start the time this early. year is like five thirty a.m. It's an yeah, early start. Yeah, by nine o'clock the sun is full blast. Yeah, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy. Is your husband joining? You yeah, my start? husband. We're we're going to run it together. We're not going to race it. We're going to do it for fun. We're probably going to wear some silly costumes. We're going to stop and take lots of pictures. <laughs> so I'm excited. Well, it's designed for that. It's not designed yeah. for personal best because uh, as you get to each event or each special area of Disney, there will be a character there, right. and there's somebody there with the camera. You take your camera with you. Yeah. yeah it'll be very exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, well, let's talk about your your band. You mentioned them, The Fades. Mm -hmm. Where could we find you? So the best place to check us out is on, right now is online, thefadesnyc.com. Um, we don't currently have a public gig on the books. We've been playing a lot of private events, weddings, parties, things like that. We're very popular on the 30th and 40th birthday circuit. Really? <laughs> Lots of people hire us to play their birthday parties. Because of, yeah. they, they, they were born in the 80s? I think so, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, because I'm in my 30s, so I grew up to the music of the 80s. So, you know, I think people between 30 and 40, that's sort of the... Uh, the 80s sweet spot um, but you know we're we're around and we actually play a lot of events we played um, the NYC runs zombies take Manhattan race last month so every now and then we pop up at a, at on a race Roosevelt on Roosevelt Island yeah get to do a little travel yeah yeah we were out there on Roosevelt Island playing How did some that 80s. Go? it was fun cool. it was a really fun event now did you sing the national anthem at that race as well I didn't know I don't think there was a national anthem at that race oh I guess they only do it for a full and halves. <laughs> full and halves yeah I've done it for, um, gosh, a lot of races now. I've done the Fifth Avenue Mile. Oh, you did? The Yonkers Half Marathon. I did the Brooklyn Marathon last year. Are you going to do it again for the Brooklyn? No, because Brooklyn's the same day as Philadelphia. Oh. So I'll be in Philadelphia instead. Oh, so somebody else got the honors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, interesting. Yeah. And then what about... Uh, in your business life, you're, you're a reporter. Are they going to send you to some exotic <laughs> place like the Olympics again? Or? Um, probably, I'm probably for the foreseeable future, I'm I'm around. I, I travel the races, and every time I go to a race like Disney, um, you know, I write about it. So I'm starting to fill up my my race schedule for the next year. Oh, cool! So I do a lot of a lot of running and then writing about my running. Um, so I'll keep doing my blog. Hopefully, on the run, we'll be back in the spring. Um, that you know remains to be seen yet as oh, New York Road Runners sells all their now? stuff. Yeah, we're on hiatus. Um, we finished up our fall season um, and uh, so hopefully we'll be back in the spring. Oh, cool. And, and that was your debut, episodes. right? So yes, you're probably debut, evaluating and looking at it and yeah. figuring out what the, what the different themes. Yeah. Well, New York is very rich in talent. It is indeed. So. Yeah, and it's and it's and as a show on the run hopes to to be sort of a, a national show too, and not just look at New York road run at New York runners, but you know runners all over the country. Well, there's more to New York road runners than just the marathon and New York City mar <laughs> half true. marathon. Uh, so the opportunities for you are just fabulous. Was there anything else you wanted to say to your fans or a shout out to a family member? Anything? 
So I guess I'll just say to everybody who's out there, who are runners, keep running, um, and uh, whatever obstacles are in your way, hopefully you can use running to overcome them. That's something that I've done a lot in my life. Well, thank you so much for that. You have a fabulous career, and I hope On the Run has a long run. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thanks, Will. Thank you.